Welcome back to Let's Play Jamestown. Last time we tackled the East Frontier. Today, we're going to try the Dark Sector. After having some assistance from John Smith, we know that this is the area to go if we are to clear our name. From what, however, I'm not sure. That's why I say this, uh, the reason that you get this game is not for the story, it's for the high-intensity action. There seems to be some story holes that never get solved. But those are the different ships you can choose. Gunner, beam, and charge. <clears throat> I personally like the beam. And you can also do the exploding bullets one, too. But it's really it's a matter of playstyle. I think that the beam that I'm using today is definitely a lot easier to manipulate than some of the other vessels. So if you're someone who would be interested in this game but fears that you might not get the full value of it because you're not good at it, then never fear, because there are different ships that would suit your playstyle, and there's also different difficulties. Right now I'm playing on Legendary, which is the third toughest difficulty. I think there's two more difficulties above it. Yeah, it gets that crazy. And um, as you get progressively better, you'll find more and more you can take on these challenging modes that you thought, I'm never going to do Legendary mode. And that's really what I thought, too. I thought, wow, I'm good with just playing normal mode of this intense game. I doubt that I'll ever master Legendary. And I certainly haven't mastered it, but at least I can play competently in it, which I'm doing now. You know, what really forces you to get better at the game is the fact that in order to move on in the levels, unless you try out the gauntlet, I think the gauntlet might allow you to do every level one after another. I'm not certain, though. But, uh... In order to unlock the other levels, they say, well, you must defeat the previous levels in hard mode. You must defeat them in legendary mode, and so on and so forth. So it kind of progresses you through, inspiring you, saying, come on, I know you can live longer than that. I know you can dodge those bullets. And this game is all about dodging bullets. Ah, unlike that. Damn, I totally just ran into that one. There was a complete gap for me. You know, I'm not the best at this game, but it's fun. I love... What I love about arcade shooters, and uh, this is like just the arcade type style, which is cool to see a lot of indie people doing that. They kind of harken back to the retro days. I don't know if it's because it's easier to program that. Probably with a smaller video game team to develop for, you couldn't do as high intensity graphics um, or gameplay style. But I'll get to the graphics on a separate note. But as far as what you have to do, what makes this game great to keep coming back to is that every time, not to mention the other difficulty modes that will actually change up the entire bullet patterns that are being fired at you and completely change the game, you also have a high score. And there are online leaderboards as well, so you can compete with other people. You could compete with your own score, connect up to Steam and see how other people are doing, and uh, it's very competitive. It's just, it's kind of a personal uh, competition for me because I don't have online, so I like to beat my own old scores. That's really my main game with these types of shooters. I do that all the time in Bit Trip Fate because I love the music, and this, I love the high-intensity action. The music in this is very awesome, too. It's creepy, it's classic, which I could say as far as being uh, kind of in the frontier. You know, I don't want to say it's classic like uh, classic jazz or anything, but it's definitely classic like old-timey, and that's a cool effect. Another element of this game that I really appreciate is the graphical styling. Everything is really detailed and drawn out. It's not like high intensity HD graphics wise, like Sonic Generations where it's that detailed, but everything is really well drawn. It looks like I'm writing on some kind of notebook paper that someone drew. I'm, it looks like I'm going through someone's artistic notebook, kind of. And defeating all these crazy enemies that they designed is really enjoyable as well. They have a good vast amount of enemies and types for you to defeat with different sets of wave patterns and forms like this annoying thing over here and uh, those creepy guys tentacle annoyances that pop out and try to spurt bullets everywhere. It's really great to see a shooter that doesn't uh, rely on like two different enemy types because that's something that uh, a classic arcade shooter could be known for is uh, not really varying up the type of enemies that you fight. Thankfully, this one has a good variation, and they're all wonderfully drawn out. It's beautiful. It's terrifyingly beautiful. Jesus, they all plow out bullets. Just like compiling the things. Couldn't spit them out fast enough. 
but it's up to you to find the best way to not only get through the level without getting a hit, but also to collect as many of those ducats as you can. Because that's what leads you to the next top score. You'll see that the next star rating is dependent on how many more ducats we have to go. And it will decrease as you get more. So what I'm doing is really half of the, uh, the successful way to defeat this game. You know, I'm trying to live, but not taking too much great attention to where the ducats fall. I will try and nab them, but if you're looking for the highest score, you can't just defeat enemies alone. Collect them gold pieces. Now we fight Lady of the Lake. The bane of the Roanoke. Oh man. Yeah, that's certainly the bane of someone's existence. Could be yours if you don't attack this boss carefully. If you're finding you have some trouble defeating it and getting to the center of its eye with those peripheral attacking plants surrounding, if you could call them plants, then knock those things out first. And while it's doing that beam attack and you can't get in front of it, that's really the prime time to take those plants out. So they don't get in your way of attacking it through the center. <clears throat> when it dives under the water like that, be prepared to hit all the spots that appear and are moving in the water. You see those red spots in the water? That's the tentacles and where they're going to pop out. Be sure to blast them with your special right before they have chances to do, wow, massive beam attacks like that. Otherwise, it will certainly pose a threat to your survival, make things a lot harder to dodge. Vaunt when you can like that. Vaunt at the most optimal time when you're being hit with many bullets from every end because that's a great way to extend the time you sit in front of the boss's main weak point and hit him with your special as many times as you can. And I remind you, again, it's not going to be that easy if you're not playing with a beam ship like me. But I recommend this ship for first-time players because it's a great way to get kind of uh, focused on arcade shooters. November 6th, 1619 High Noon. The girl emerged from the swamp like an apparition, but when she said her name, I knew she was as real as you or I. Imagine, Virginia Dare first child of the colonies, if I brought her back to England with me, I'd surely be pardoned by the king. I don't know if it's Dare or Dare, but she will hear none of that. Her heart is fixated on rescuing her father, Jokum. She says, Roanoke colony was destroyed when she was still a child, that the swamp itself was driven bloodthirsty by some manner of Martian force. Apparently that weapon was wielded by the very same conquistador, who attacked our settlement today, and even now he holds her father in the most hellish prison. If I help rescue her father, she has pledged to return to England with me. It would seem our interests are aligned at least for now. <laughs> 